Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to and welcome back to another video. I'm celebrity and fashion photographer Chris Cavanaugh and in today's video we're going to be getting into five tips that beginner photographers need to know. So before we get into the video, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Head below and click that subscribe button to become a part of my family, the photo family. So let's get into the video. Coming in at number one, we have investing in research. I think sometimes getting into the photography industry, it could be something very intimidating, especially when reaching out to other photographers, whether they have bigger credentials than you, better quality, and have been doing this for a longer time than you. But it's vital to your growth as a photographer simply because investing in workshops, being mentored by other photographers, doing the research to actually find the niche of photography or style of photography that you would like to get into is important. And then also when it comes down to it, buying and investing in your education, your quality as a photographer, going to workshops, getting retouching in Photoshop LUTs packs or you know, retouching skin packs, all of these things will help you in evolving the quality as a photographer. And it's something that's so vital when you can get a head start on actually reaching out to people so that they can instill in you what they learned at their beginning stages. Coming in at number two is gear talk. Listen, it's something that so many photographers when we talk about gear fray away from, but it's so important when coming in as a new photographer to know what gear you would like to use. Not so much of the quality or the megapixels, but more so of the ergonomics, the feel, how these things feel in your hand. This is going to be a tool that you use within your photography business that plays a major part. It's, so rather it's just a Nikon or a Canon or a Sony. These are the major, you know, three that most photographers go into. So knowing if you like the feel of what a Nikon feels in your hand or a Sony feels in your hand or a Canon, do you like DSLR or mirrorless? Do you like the capabilities of what mirrorless lends to photographers over DSLR? Also, when it comes into color consistency, each and every can camera has their own color formula that you might like over the other one. So finding out these things like going to a B&H or a Best Buy or different stores that lend you the availability, whether you have a photographer friend that you can also use, you know, their camera, whether it's one of the Nikon, Sony's or Fuji's or whatever it may be. Being able to actually do the research and finding out which camera equipment you would like to get started in can help you so much with the first beginning stages of jumping into the photography industry. Coming in at number three, we have shoot everything. Shooting everything as a photographer is vital to your growth simply because it allows you to number one, find what niche of photography and style that you like as an individual. Also, it helps you with the quality. Every time you do a shoot, you need to look back at your past work and see the things that you've done correctly and the things that you could improve on. Also, it helps with building a portfolio, which is vital when it comes to finding the particular niche as a photographer you would like to go into, whether it's wedding photography, whether it's portrait photography, whether it's fashion photography or commercial. Building your portfolio with people in those specific niches will help you to get greater in quality and also quantity with the portfolio you can display. And let me tell you this as a photographer. Even the top of the top photographers do free work. They shoot everything because it lends them the availability to express themselves creativity that in, in their creativity that when shooting a paid gig sometimes don't allow you to do. So I say pick up your camera, go outside, shoot things like nature, people, architecture, flowers, whatever it may be. Just get out and shoot. Coming in at number four, we have wait a year until you actually purchase equipment. I say this from the perspective of a lot of photographers get into the photography industry because they see it as a way of artistic expression, especially if you're doing it as a hobbyist. But when you start to tap into the business of photography, it's a whole different ball game. So many photographers quit trying to the pursuit of trying to become a photographer within the five to 12 month period simply because you have things like understanding how to get clients. A lot of photographers feel when they get into the photography industry, you're going to automatically get clients simply because you have a camera. That's something that does not happen. Also, the ability to get a great image. A lot of photographers feel simply because you buy the top of the line, most expensive a camera, the quality is going to be of what you see in the magazines or on YouTube that some of these top photographers are using. You have to know your camera, learn your camera, learn the settings, learn composition, learn the actual fundamentals in capturing a great image to be able to do that. That does not come through the camera. It helps with the quality, but it doesn't make the image. Also within that as well, a lot of photographers get all of this equipment. Photography is a huge investment. 
from the camera body, the lens, the lights, the stands, the actual software that we actually use as photographers to be able to, you know, retouch and go into Photoshop with. All of that stuff adds up, especially with monthly expenses. And I think when you invest too much into that, especially in the beginning stages without actually knowing if this is something you can do, it then becomes a waste of money because you've invested all of this money into your photography and it's now something that is sitting on your desk or still sitting in the bag eight months you know from the point that you purchased it so wait a year make sure you take the time to learn your camera learn if this is something you actually want to do go in learning the business of photography first also go in going to learn how to actually brand yourself as a photographer, market yourself as a photographer, shoot as a photographer to develop your portfolio. And if that's something within a year's time that you feel is necessary that you want to pursue, do it. All right, guys, coming to our fifth and final tip, it's where to find the best photography equipment at an inexpensive price. A lot of the times, like I said in the previous video, the photography industry is expensive. And whether you're coming in as a hobbyist growing into a professional, it's a decision that you need to make. Because a lot of the times, like I said, you get into the photography industry and you find out that it's not as easy as what you thought it was going to be. So being able to find great quality equipment at an inexpensive rate, that's not the huge investment of finding equipment at a big box store is so vital. So whether you're using places like the Facebook Marketplace, whether you're using a pawn shop or a thrift store to find photography equipment is a great way to get a camera plus the actual lens attached to it. A lot of the times when you go to pawn shops, they have a camera body that someone has purchased or and brought in for you know pawning or selling. And then you also have a lot of the lenses that they purchased and brought in with that that you can buy either individually or in a full set. So going to places like the pawn shop, the Facebook marketplace, or even just a thrift store is vital to great equipment. I hope these tips helped you in five tips that beginner photographers need to know, and I will see you back in the next video.